Hello everyone, in this video I will be covering all of the basic things that you will need to know to understand both the emitter and the hair particle systems. Let's get into it. Okay, so now that we are in Blender, let's add a particle system to our object. Let's start off with our cube. We go to the particle system properties, click on it and press the plus icon to add a new particle system. By default, the particle system is set to emitter. You can also choose the hair type particle system, but we will cover this in a later part of this video. Let's start off with the emitter particle system. You may be asking, what does the emitter particle system actually do? Well, we can see this by pressing the space bar to start our playback timer. You can also press the play icon but the spacebar is the shortcut. So let's do that. And as we can see, our cube starts emitting particles. This is because we have a particle system of emitter. Okay, so before we go into the values that we can change in the particle system, what if you want to give the other objects in your scene also a particle system? Well, you can click on those objects and you can click on their particle properties to add a new particle system. Now we have created two different particle system and you can see that by the name. Our sphere has a particle system called 001 and our cube has the particle system called particle system. You can give each object in your scene their own particle system, but you can also make every object share a particle system. So let's do that. We go to our sphere and we click on this icon beside the particle system name. Once we do, we can see all of the particle systems that are in our scene. We know that the particle system of our cube is called particle system. So let's click on that. And now both the sphere and the cube share the same particle system settings. Let's change the particle system name to rain particle system like this now let's also give the other objects in our scene the same rain particle system so now all of our objects in our scene have the same rain particle system and once you start the playback timer you can see the particle system in action Okay, so let's start at the basics. Our emitter particle system has an emission with a number of thousand. This represents the amount of emitted particles. So if we change this number to a hundred, the amount of particles that our system will emit decreases. Below the number of emissions, there is the seed value. It's not often that you will need to change the seed value because it's just a random value which will indicate when a particle will be emitted from our particle system. So, okay, below that we have our frame start and our frame end. And you can see once our frame count, which you can see here in the bottom side of your screen, reaches 200, our emission will end, which is now. And our emission has ended. You can decrease the number and increase the number to the frame that you want the particle system to end. You can do the same for the start of the particle system and with this you can really specifically control when your particle system emits objects. The lifetime is the value of how long the particles will exist. You can see that they stop existing after 50 frames and if we increase the lifetime you can see that they will not disappear for at least 200 frames and of course the lifetime randomness is the randomness of this lifetime if you increase it not every particle will live 200 frames some will die sooner some will die later okay so that's very cool but what can we actually do with it we just called our particle system rain so we're gonna make it rain but first we will need to create a raindrop model. So let's add a sphere to our scene. We can do this by going to add mesh 
and add a UV sphere. Let's drag it out of the cube with the move cursor. Let's go into edit mode by going here to object mode and changing it to edit mode. And then we get this. Let's select the most upper vertices of our sphere. Press this round icon and hold down the top arrow. Now you can see this circle appear. This circle will help us change the entire object. Without this turned on, we will just only move this vertice. So let's turn it on, drag it up, and with our mouse scroll wheel, let's change the circle to something bigger around this. This looks like a very simple raindrop. Okay. So now let's give it a raindrop material. Go to material properties, new material, call it raindrop. And let's change the base color to something simple and blue. Now we can go into the material view and there our blue raindrop is. So, okay, let's scale it down a bit like this. Okay, so now, how do we add this raindrop to this particle system that we just created? Let's click on our cube. You can also click on either of those other objects. Let's go to the particle system settings and let's scroll down to render. Here it says that the particle system will render as a path. Let's change this to object. And then under object, you can click on this tool and click on our raindrop sphere. Now, if we press the spacebar again, you can, mm, you cannot really see the raindrops, but they are there, but they are too tiny. Okay. So how do we increase the scale of them? Go back to render and under scale, drag the scale up. And you can also play with the scale randomness a bit for the fun of it. So now we have created a rain particle system. It's very simple, but it's very handy to know about. So before we change our emitter particle system to a hair particle system, let's add something extra and a little bit more complicated. Go into add force field and click on wind. Let's drag this out of here and rotate it 90 degrees. So now we have created a wind force field, which will blow wind this way. And we want to let it interact with our falling raindrops so that they will be blown to the side a little bit. So if we start our playback right now, let's do it. Nothing really happens, or maybe it does for a little bit. You can see that the raindrops are a little bit falling to the side. It's not straight down anymore. But how can we increase this? Go into the wind force field and into the physics properties. Here we can adjust the strength of the wind. So let's change it to something of four. Now, if we go to the beginning and press play, you can see that all of our raindrops are interacting with the wind force field. If we play around with the strength of our wind force field, you can see that the particle system will be affected. Okay, so that's enough of the emitter particle system for now. Let's stop the playback. Let's bring it back to frame zero and click on one of our objects. Let's now change this rain particle system to a hair one. For now, I will just create a new hair particle system and place it on all of the objects. Let's change this hair particle system to hair. And oh my God, what just happened? Okay, so the hair particle system is exactly what you think it is. It emits hair. So if we go to the emissions tab again, we can see the number of hairs that will be emitted. So let's change this to also 100 
and now we can clearly see what's going on. We can also change the length of these hairs. So let's do it like this. Okay, so in our last beginner tutorial video, we created a simple tree and a simple mushroom. Let's bring those back and here they are. So instead of emitting hair, I want all of these objects to emit these two objects. So let's do that. Let's click on one of our objects and in the particle system settings, let's change render to object. And now with this eyedropper tool selected, we can press on a tree. And now if we change the scale, you can see that the tree will be emitted on the hair particle system. But it's only the tree. If we want to add this mushroom, we can create an entirely new particle system with only the mushroom, or we can change the render as setting to collection. And now I've already placed these two objects in their own collection here. So if we set the render option as render as collection, and under the instance collection, we choose collection two, then both the tree and the mushroom will be rendered on our objects, as you can see. Okay, but our objects are not pointing in the right direction. So how do we change that? Let's go into the hair particle system and enable advanced. Now enable rotation and open it up. Let's change the orientation axis to global Z. No, that's not the right one. Global Y, yes, that is the right one. You can play around with this and see which one is the right one for you. So now we can see that they are rendering in the right direction. Okay, so let's now delete all of our objects except for our plane object. Let's bring it back into the center of our screen and scale it up with S a bit. Now let's add some scale to the objects that are being emitted by going to render and scale, scaling them a little bit random. And as you can see, the objects are being emitted as hair particles. You may be saying, well, why is our tree and also our mushroom, why are they halfway in the ground? Well, this is because their origin point is not at the base of their model. And every object will be emitted by their origin point. What is their origin point? Well, if we click on one of the models, you can see this point right here and this point right here. Those are the origin points. How do we make those origin points drop to the bottom of the models? Well, if we turn off the plane in our viewport like this and bring our models to zero, zero like this. Now, if we drag our model up so that the 3D cursor in the middle of the scene is right at the bottom, if we press right mouse button on our object and do set origin to 3D cursor, we can see that the origin has dropped to the lower part of the model. So let's also do that for our mushroom. Now, if we re-enable our plane in the viewport, now we can see that the trees and mushrooms are being emitted properly on top of the plane. Now we can also give our plane a little forest floor material, like something green like this. And we have a little forest, which has been created entirely by the particle system settings. You can play around with these settings, change the seed, change the amount of hair particles being emitted. Do you want a thick forest or a small one? Another few fun values to play around with are in the rotation, the randomizer 
and the face too, like this. Now we have a little forest with the trees being a little wonky and the mushrooms also. Okay, so those are the very basics of the particle systems. I hope you guys learned something from this video. And if you have any questions, feel free to place them in the comments below. Bye and good luck rendering.